Hello friends, welcome to Literary Diary. Friends, in today's video, I'm gonna analyze the prologue of All for Love by John Ryden. So this video is very important. So just stay connected. Here we go. So at first, just read the prologue thoroughly like this. Fat flocks of critics hover here today, as vultures wait on armies for their prey, all gapping for the carcass of a play, with croaking notes. The bored some dire event and follows dying poets by the scent. Our gives himself for gone. You have lost your time. He fights this day unarmed without his rhyme and brings a tale which often has been told as sad as Dido's and as almost as old. His hero, whom he wits his bully call, baits off his mitchell and scarce rams at all. He's somewhat lewd but a well meaning mind. Which match fights little but of wondrous kind, in short a pattern and a companion fit, for all the keeping toadies of the pit, I could name more a wife and a mistress too, both to be plain too good for most of you, the wife well natured and a mistress true. Now poets, if your fame has been his care, allow him all the candy you can spare, a brave man scorns to quarrel once a day, like Hector's in at every pity fray. Let those find fault whose wits so very small, they have need to show that they can think at all. Errors like straws upon the surface flow. He who would search for pulse must die below. Fops may have leave to label all they can, as pygmies would be glad to loop a man. Half wits are fleas, so little and so light, we scarce could know the leave. But that they bite, but as the rich went out with daily feasts for change, become their next potent guests, drink hearty draughts of ale from plain brown bowls, and snatch the homely rasher from the coals. So you, retiring from much better cheer, for once may venture to do penance here, and since the plenteous autumn now is past, whose grapes and peaches have indulged your taste, taking good part from our poor poet's board, such revealed fruits as winter can afford. So this is the prologue. Now I'm gonna analyze it. First line is what flocks the critics over here today as vultures wait on armies for their prey, all gapping for the carcass of a play with croaking notes the board some dire event and follows dying poets by the set. So in this line John Dryden tries to criticize the critics who are hanging around him to criticize his works. Here he compares the critics to vultures which wait near the battlefield for the soldiers to be slaughtered because the dead bodies of the soldiers will serve as food for the vultures. Like the vultures the critics are all waiting for some play to condemn and criticize it. The, these critics speak in loud and jarring voice to predict some disastrous event and they try to trace by their sense of smell those poets who have already been condemned as having no merit like vultures do while discovered. Okay. So now let us jump to the next section. I know. Our gives himself for gone. You have lost your time. He fights this day unarmed without his rhyme and brings a tale which often has been told as sad as Dido's and as almost as old. Then Dryden said that the critics have come on the right occasion to the theatre because now they get the opportunity to condemn his play all for love. Dryden adds that he will face the critics without any defense because he wrote this play in blank verse without using rhyme, which is quite important. Dryden also said that he is giving a play which has been told by other writers and which is as tragic as the story of Dido, the Queen of Carthage, who too lost, lost her life for the sake of love. And this story is almost as old as the story of Dido. Okay, so then line 10 to 15. His hero, whom you wits his bully call, baits off his metal and scarce rants at all. He is somewhat lewd, but of well meaning mind, whips much, fights little, but of wondrous kind. In short, a pattern and a companion fit for all the keeping tonies of the pit. Okay, so Dryden's hero in this play is Antony. Whom intelligent people like critics would uh, regard as a bully, but this hero seems to have lost his stature as a warrior and he hardly indulges in any extravagant rhetoric as a tragic hero is supposed to do. This man is somewhat lavish or lustful, but his intentions are good. He weeps much, fights little, but is 
is wonderfully kind-hearted. In short, he is a fit companion and a model for all the silly groundings and is in no way inferior to the many Antonis who have previously figured in dreams written by other writers or authors. Okay. So, next we have line 16 to 18. Okay. I could name more, a wife and a mistress too, both to be plain, too good for most of you. The wife will nature and a mistress too. Okay. So, now Dryden say that there are others there are other characters in the play like the wife octavia and the mistress cleopatra and both these women are too good for most of you the wife is amiable and the mistress is sincere so now number 19 to 26 now poets if your fame has been his care allow him all the candle you can spare a brave man scorns to quarrel once a day like hector's in at every petty fray let those find fault whose wit so very small they have need to show that they can think at all. Errors like straws upon the surface flow. He who would search for pulse must die below. Okay. And now Dryden is addressing the poets by saying that he have always been protecting their reputations. They also should now permit him to speak frankly as possible. He also said that the poets not to go out of the way of criticizing an author like him. A brave man quarrel once and they does not copy the example of bullies who are ready to take part in every petty quarrel. It beneath it is beneath his dignity to quarrel every day. By their indiscriminate criticisms, they want to show that they can think. The critics who want to discover the merits of a play not really only in surface. They must examine it closely and thoroughly just as a diva has to reach at the bottom of the sea in his search for pearls. Okay. So now from number twenty seven to thirty. Fops may have leave to level all the can, as pygmies would be glad to loop a man. Half wits are fleas, little, so little and so light. We scarce could know they leave, but they, but that they bite. Okay, so here Dryden is saying that let fops try their utmost level down all plays by seeing faults in, as of them, and recognizing no merit in way. In doing so, these false critics would like the pygmies who would feel glad if all men are down to their own dwarfish height. As for the immature critics, as they like plays which are so tiny and so light that we hardly become aware of their presence, expect by their bite. Okay, so now number 31 to 36. But as the rich when tired with daily feasts for change become their next in, next poor tain and suckists, drink hearty draughts of ale from plain brown bowls and snatch the homely rasher from the coals. So ye retiring from much better cheer for once may venture to do penance here. Okay, so now Dryden is giving example of uh, the rich people who feel fed up uh, with their daily food and just for the sake of a change they go and become the guest of some poor tenants of theirs at the poor tenants house the rich persons drink plenty of ordinary and cheap beer from ordinary and so uh, soiled mugs and they greedily snatch the homely pieces of bacon being roasted on the burning coals in the kitchen and dryden addressing the critics who are the members of the audience in the theater should also copy the example of these rich people. They should withdraw themselves from the momentous duty of winning fame by criticizing great poets. They should for once subject themselves to the unwelcome task of judging the work of a humble poet like Dryden. So now the last four lines. And since that plenteous autumn is now past whose graves and peaches have indulged your taste, take in good part from our poor poet's board, such rival force as winter can afford. Okay. So now uh, Dryden is giving example of the season autumn. Autumn is a season when plenty of fruits are available. During this season, people enjoy eating these delicious fruits. But when winter comes, those fruits are no longer available. However, winter may provide its own fruits, which people eat, though reluctantly. Okay. In the same way, the critics should reconcile themselves for seeing the performance of Dryden's humble play, All for Love, because the season of, for the enactment of good drama is over. Okay, so friends, this is the analysis of the prologue of Dryden's All for Love. Hope you understand it. And if you like this video, then please hit the like button, share it to your friends, do comments, and don't forget to subscribe my channel. So, bye bye. See you in the next session.